The Sega Dreamcast. Sega Dreamcast? Sega's swan song in the console market. Well, sort of. And the first entry into the sixth console generation, beating the PlayStation 2, Xbox, and GameCube to the punch. Alas, this head start didn't do the Dreamcast any favours in the long run, and the console with the swirly logo was discontinued in 2001, less than three years after its original Japanese release. Sega became a third party game publisher. Sonic let himself go, and the fledgling franchises such as Jet Set Radio and Crazy Taxi began their undeserved slide into relative obscurity. Despite its short lifespan though, the console was not without its highlights. Famous hits such as Sonic Adventure and Soul Calibur sit alongside revered classics such as Skies of Arcadia and Shenmue. We're digging a little deeper today though, sifting through the murky mire of Sega's final console, at least the final one anyone cares about, searching for unexpectedly shiny bits. We managed to find some too. I'm pro gaming prospector Peter from Triple Jump, and here are 10 hidden gems from the Sega Dreamcast. Number 10. Blue Stinger Alright, this Dreamcast launch title has a bit of a mixed reputation, but stick with us because it does have an interesting reason for being here. In Blue Stinger, players either take on the role of Elliot B Ball Aid, an elite sea rescue operative, or Dogs Bower, who is a man who is literally called Dogs. The story is centred on an island that seems to have recently risen from the sea at the precise point of the meteorite impact that wiped out the dinosaurs. Interesting stuff. Things get even more interesting though in the differences between the Japanese and Western versions of the game. In the original Japanese release, Blue Stinger makes use of cinematic camera angles similar to the early Resident Evil games. The version localised for the West, however, opts for a fixed third person viewpoint. This means that Blue Stinger presents a unique opportunity for survival horror fans to finally figure out which is the better approach. Critics at the time couldn't decide though. Some said that the Western version lost a lot of its tension and cinematic qualities, while others claimed that the Japanese version's gameplay suffered in favour of snazzy camera angles. Which would you choose? If the answer is a better survival horror game, don't worry, we've got you covered in a few minutes. This one is absolutely worth a peek though. Number 9. Elemental Gimmick Gear there are quite a few video games about eggs, and even a few video games in which the main character is an egg, but as far as we're aware, there is only one video game called Egg. Elemental Gimmick Gear, to give its full title, is an action RPG for the Dreamcast with striking 2D visuals and a top-down perspective. The player takes control of Leon, a name I can pronounce, hooray, a man who was found asleep next to one of the titular eggs, which are robotic exoskeletons. Leon wakes up 100 years later and sets off to recover his memories and save the world from an event known as The Breeding. The game also answers the age-old question of which came first, the chicken or the egg. It was chicken, as that game came out for the Atari in 1982, predating egg by 17 years. <laughs> Easy, why was this ever a question? Elemental Gimmick Gear is a deep, unique game with a bright colour palette, fast-paced 3D boss battles, and a fascinating world of lore to dip your soldiers into. More importantly, stomping around in your adorable little egg robot is an absolute mood. They can even roll around like eggs. Definitely a hidden gem right here. A hidden, egg-shaped gem. Number 8. Napple Tail, Arcea in Daydream what is a napple anyway? A half a pineapple? Well, this oddly named Japan-only adventure game for the Dreamcast is set in Napple World. Napple World exists beyond time, between reality and the land of dreams. The land of daydreams, if you will, where you go when you settle down for a mid-afternoon nap. Oh, Napple! 
Napple, there you go. That's why it's called that. Napple Arcia in Daydream, it's probably pronounced Asia in America, is a 2.5D platformer with a structure similar to Sonic Adventure. There's an explorable hub world that links to linear levels, each of which is based on a different season and culminates in a boss encounter. It's an easygoing and well-crafted adventure that's probably most well-known outside of Japan for its music. As of 2019, though, there is an unofficial English translation if you're interested. One thing that makes Napple Tale especially remarkable is how unashamedly feminine it is. The creative staff for the game consisted almost entirely of women, up to and including legendary anime composer Yoko Kano. A game for girls, by girls. Ha! How do you like them, Napples? Number 7. Headhunter Looking like the Dreamcast's answer to Deus Ex, this science fiction third-person shooter is set in a dystopian future where human organs are the most valuable resource around. Players take on the role of bounty hunter Jack Wade, in a world where criminals have their healthy, juicy bits taken away to serve the wealthy members of society. This practice is so important that traditional firearms have been banned in the apprehension of lawbreakers in favour of paralysing electrical bullets that won't damage all of those lovely kidneys and livers. Humans need livers to live, you know, that's why they're called livers. While not a Dreamcast exclusive, the PS2 version of Headhunter was noticeably inferior, losing out visually and suffering from a number of glitches. So if you're interested in a spot of headhunting, then the Dreamcast version is the way to go. Also, if you still need to be tempted to give this one a try, one particularly enamoured Eurogamer review declared that Headhunter's story and setting were superior to those of the Metal Gear Solid series. Headhunter did actually receive a sequel, Headhunter Redemption, but that game is neither a hidden gem nor is it for the Dreamcast, so it's completely irrelevant to this list. Maybe if we do a video called 10 Average Games for the PS2 or something, it might feature, but don't hold your breath for that one. Number 6. Tech Romancer Upon seeing the name of this Dreamcast arcade port, you might be expecting some kind of moody, futuristic adventure with magical elements and sinister cybernetic organisms. You know, like the game Technomancer. Either that or you're imagining some sort of robot dating sim. Well, you'd be wrong on both accounts. Techromancer for the Dreamcast is a one-on-one -on -one mech fighting game. Coming from Capcom, who know a thing or two about fighting games, Techromancer takes the combat off the streets and into futuristic battlefields as gigantic mechs fight each other for dominance. It features an extensive story and each mech has multiple crew members, meaning there's loads and loads of characters too. Boasting brash action, an entertaining narrative, and very pretty backgrounds that still stand up today, Techromancer is an opportunity for players to step away from all of modern gaming's open worlds, crafting, and groundbreaking storytelling for a moment, and go back to a simpler time when big robots smashing into each other was enough. And if the game manages some kind of revival, we might even get that dating sim spin-off as well. Fingers crossed, eh? Number 5. San Francisco Rush 2049 when thinking of Dreamcast racing games, Metropolis Street Racer, forefather of the Project Gotham racing series, is probably the one that most likely comes to mind. When searching for hidden gems that might appeal to petrol heads though, San Francisco Rush 2049 definitely offers up something different. Looking like Wipeout for people who prefer their cars to have wheels, San Francisco Rush 2049 is an arcade-style racer set in, oh, you guessed it, a futuristic San Francisco, 2049 to be specific. The game encourages players to get a couple of pals over to enjoy some good old-fashioned couch multiplayer, offering races, deathmatch battle modes, and stunt modes in which players receive points for performing elaborative flippy jumps. While the Dreamcast version of the game was well-reviewed and even got an award nomination, San Francisco Rush 2049 also came out for the Nintendo 64. Come to think of it, a version was released for the Game Boy Color too, but that's less of a hidden gem and more of a hidden lump of crap, really. Number 4. Sega Gaga 
Sega really let their hair down with this one, a testimony to the brand's willingness to experiment and throw caution to the wind during their console manufacturing days, Sega Gaga or Sega Gaga gives players the chance to take on the role of a Sega employee trying to turn around the company's fortunes as it flounders in the wake of its competitors. <laughs> Pretty close to real life then, as far as Sega's fortunes in the industry are concerned. Scarily close in actual content too. The hero a young man named Sega Taro, must attempt to save Sega by travelling from development team to development team, battling disgruntled employees who have mutated due to their stressful working conditions. The most tragic enemies are the ones we can relate to. He battles these poor fellows by shouting abuse at them, berating the quality of their games, and even attacking their personal lives. <laughs> nice likeable protagonist then, right? Sega Taro will also come across various Sega characters, including Sonic, Alex Kidd, and Rystar slash Restar slash Ristar. It depends how you want to say it, everyone says it differently and I say Rystar, there you go. He'll even battle mechs based on Sega's previous consoles. This game is bat poop insane, but utterly original, and a hidden gem due to its uniqueness alone. As far as we can tell, an English fan translation is in the works at time of recording, so keep an eye out for that if you want to explore the minutiae of Sega's console market failure in bonkers JRPG form. And why wouldn't you want to? Number 3. Super Magnetic Neo if you're imagining Keanu Reeves covered in spoons right now, then you've got the wrong idea. Super Magnetic Neo for the Dreamcast is actually more like Crash Bandicoot covered in spoons. The gameplay style of Super Magnetic Neo is very reminiscent of the Wumpa Fruit Enthusiast's adventures, but with an added gameplay element to make things even more interesting. That element is, you guessed it, spoons. No, sorry, magnetism. I, I was talking a lot about spoons, it sort of threw me off. This slick and entertaining 3D platform allows players to use main character Neo's magnetism powers to defeat baddies and solve puzzles. Neo can attract metal enemies towards him before switching poles, as it were, to repel them, turning them into projectiles. He can also manipulate platforms and attach himself to zip lines, making for some satisfying magnet-based platforming and puzzle solving. The story concerns a troublesome infant named Pinky, who has somehow taken over an amusement park. Neo is a robot created by a professor who really loves this amusement park. He loves it so much, in fact, that he's willing to send in his automated minion to fight a literal infant for control of it. Despite all of this strangeness though, there is a fun magnetic adventure on offer here. Just try not to let its odd premise <laughs> repel you. Number 2. D2 D2 is a story-rich, cutscene-heavy survival horror game in which the main antagonists are infected humans who've been transformed into terrifying plant-like monstrosities. And you thought The Last of Us was innovative. Seriously though, D2 was criticised at the time for focusing too much on its story, giving players long periods without gameplay as the thrilling narrative played out. These days, such experiences are welcomed by many, and D2 definitely has a fascinating premise. The game starts off on an aeroplane flying over the majestic wilderness of Canada. The plane is soon hijacked by a sinister group that appears to be working for a spooky cultist. As if that wasn't enough of a pain in the bum for protagonist Laura, the plane also gets hit by a meteorite and crashes. Uh, Mondays, hey Laura. Laura wakes up in a cabin after one of the other survivors finds her, but intriguingly, this is nine days after the crash, which leaves eight days unaccounted for, and Laura has no idea how she managed to survive. When D2 does actually let the players interact a bit, the exploration is fun and the combat is visceral. The game is mainly worth playing for the story though, if only to finally experience the game that The Last of Us blatantly copied. We are joking, of course. Please don't come after us in the comments. Or do, it's all engagement according to YouTube, so that's fine. And number one, Ooga Booga. 
If you were looking for some online multiplayer fun for your Dreamcast back in the late 90s, there wasn't a bad selection to choose from. Fantasy Star Online springs to mind, but also Quake 3 Arena and even good old Choo Choo Rocket offered some online hijinks if you were in the market for them. But what about Ooga Booga, though? Did you ever play that one? Of course you didn't, and you missed out on a gem. The title Ooga Booga apparently refers to a volcano goddess who creates islands, and these islands become battlefields for followers hoping to earn her favor. Players choose their characters, the names of which include Hotty, Fatty, and Twitchy, and jump into madcap multiplayer battles. The whole thing amounts to some kind of Polynesian-themed Power Stone and Crash Bandicoot mashup, in which players are encouraged to throw shrunken heads at one another. Considering the fact that the Dreamcast was the first console to have a built-in modem for online play, it seemed appropriate to choose a hidden gem known for its online multiplayer as the number one spot. And Ooga Booga is the only one that features Abe Lincoln riding a boar. So we really couldn't have chosen anything else, now could we?